Hey y'all, welcome back. This is part two of the piecewise linear function problem. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and start back where we left off. So we just made our decision variables and now we need to make our objective function. Um, I didn't make parameters for the costs because I think it's just easier to type it in the objective function because there's only two. Um, so what we need to do is if you look down here, this is our most simplified version. Basically, um, we are summing over the uh, different types of oil. So there's oil 1, oil 2, um, but it's only for gas 1. So we're going to say LP sum 12 times um, gas underscore bears. So again, this is the cost of gas 1. So we are only summing over the two types, the, uh, the types of oil. So basically it's doing 12 cents times um, the amount of, uh, I guess it would be oil 1 used to produce gas 1 and then oil 2 used to produce gas 1. Um, so we do bracket parentheses i comma j for j in, or for i in oil. And then the next thing we sum over, we sum over um, 14 cents times um, amount for gas, score bears. We're summing over our two types of oil again, only for gas 2, because this is the cost for gas 2 for I in oil and then our next part of the equation is we are subtracting z underscore I think we named it z vers z underscore vers I'm gonna move this over a little z underscore vers and I'm also going to put this in parentheses just to keep it organized. C underscore bears. Um, one. Um, and again, that's just because it's Z, one, Z subscript one that we're starting off. And we're going to have the value, uh, the cost value for our first breakpoint, which is just zero. Um, so we created our array up here, so we're gonna ref or we're gonna index our array um, variable. So we're gonna say array indexed zero. Next, we're gonna subtract 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 z underscore vers two times um, our second breakpoint five hundred. Then subtract. Z underscore there's obviously this problem is very tedious and one little number that's wrong can mess it up um, our next breakpoint is a thousand and I'm again just looking at this equation Z underscore there's four times array 1500. Um, and then the next thing we need to do, of course, is set our constraints. And there's a lot, so try to keep up with me, or try to follow along. It's just there's a bunch of constraints, and you kind of have to type all of them out. And it's um, there's not a lot of chances to use loops. So um, going back to this first page, constraint one is that we can use at most um, X plus 500 gallons of oil one. So X is the amount of additional oil we purchase and then 500 is what we currently have. Um, so we are going to sum and back to this page it gives um, it already gives us what we are going to type in the computer. So um, we are it looks like we're summing over the gas but it's only for oil one. So we say LP sum we use our gas variable uh, uh, 1 comma J because again this is for oil 1 and for both gas 
values for j in. In other words, um, it's saying the total amount of oil one um, is less than or equal to. Let's see, amount underscore bears. That's our x variable, and we don't need to index that because um, we didn't refer to a set because um, it's just it's just x and there's no subscript. I think this is the first video where that's been the case, where there's been no subscript. Um, and that is possible. So you can have a decision variable that doesn't refer to a set. Um, and so our next constraint, constraint 2, let's see. We can use at most 1,000 gallons of oil 2. So we'll sum over um, the amount of... We'll sum over both types of gas. For oil two, and our max is a thousand. Our next constraint, let's see. Um, this is our fraction constraint. So this one is saying that um, for it looks like for gas one. Um, the fra the proportion of um, oil one used needs to be greater than or equal to 50 percent, and then um, for gas two, um, the amount of oil one or the amount of yeah the amount of oil one needs to be greater than or equal to 60 percent. Um, and this is a simplified version which I'm going to use, so we can say. Parentheses, parentheses, parentheses. You really don't need to, but I just think it keeps it more organized. 0.5, and I'm going exactly off of this. 0.5 times x subscript 1, 1. Um, so we need to say gas. One comma one. And then we subtract, subtract, I cannot say subtract, <laughs> minus 0.5 times um, x subscript 2, 1. And this all is greater than or equal to zero. And I think I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste this second part because this video is getting to be too long. Um, so this second part is a little, is basically the same thing. Um, I looked at this equation and um, I used the correct subscripts for our gas variable and then our next constraint let's see I think we gotta come all the way down here prob so it says x is equal to um, so the amount of gas we purchase is equal to um, all of this and I explained that in my part one video so go look at that if you're confused what this z, z variable is um, and I'm going to copy and paste that because I can just go ahead and explain all that. And you know what? I think I'm just going to do that for the rest because it's a lot. Normally I wouldn't do that for my videos, but piecewise function problems are just very long and drawn out. Um, so I'm looking at this right here, this equation. So x is our amount vars, so amount underscore vars is equal to, um, we need two equal signs, uh, 0 times z1 vars um, plus each of the breakpoints and times each z. And then our next equation is z1 is less than or equal to y1, um, z2 is less than or equal to y1 plus y2, 
and you just do what you normally do for indexing these variables. Um, it's pretty simple for these. This second page or this third page has the rest of them. So z4 is less than or equal to y3 is down here. Um, and then we also have that our y's need to equal 1 and our z's need to equal 1. So you, you can use a for loop for this. So we say lp sum. We're summing over the y. So we do y vars. I used l since we haven't used that index yet. For l in y set, um, that's our set up here. And then we sum over the z's for, uh, I said for k and z set. And that those both equal to 1. Um, and now, finally, we can go ahead and solve this problem. And I am also going to copy and paste this for the sake of time. This is what I always use. This is pretty much the same format I use when I go ahead and um, solve things using Python. Solve problem. So we say prob.solve parentheses. Um, and then we use this loop. Um, just copy that exactly. Um, that loop will print each variable and its value. Um, and then this is our total profit, our z value. So let's see if that works. Um, we're going to call this piecewise. I'm just going to call it three. I already have a piecewise two. Um, let's see. For i and in index, line 30. Huh, let's see. Oh, so because this variable didn't refer to set, we don't use that dot D-I-C-T-S. Forgot that I did that. Um, J is not defined. But, um, Sorry, y'all. I'm trying to figure out what is wrong and where that is. Oh, this was supposed to be a 1. I must have typed a J and thought it looked like a 1. Um, that was because coming back to this page, um, we are doing oil one but we're summing over our gas values or other way around um, we are summing over our oil for gas one so it's not a J we need to specify that it's for one okay so this is our solution and I'm so sorry if this video was hard to follow along with again this is a very difficult problem and I'm not sure that piecewise functions um, that Python is necessarily the best for piecewise functions, but it worked for me and I was able to get the prob or the solution. Um, so you can see that our total optimal profit is uh, 12,500 and then our the amount of additional oil one that we purchase is going to be a uh, thousand and we have that right here. And then um, all these values are correct over here. Um, so hope this video helped y'all. Um, understand how to solve a piecewise linear function using Python and the pulp package. Bye!